We're now at the top of page two. That's the financing information. Notice the three check boxes. The, certainly, if it's a cash offer, that would excite the seller the most. The seller would be second most excited by the second box, but that's rarely used. That would be a buyer who needs a loan, but is so confident in their ability to get it that they're saying, it's not contingent on me getting the loan. The most common box is line 51. Mark it with a check mark or an X, it doesn't make any difference. And that says that the buyer needs a loan. And then notice line 53 and 54. Does the buyer have to sell another property in order to qualify for the loan? Obviously, the seller would prefer that its mark does not have to. And then you have the choice there, but it says if neither box is marked, then selling another property is not a contingency. Notice paragraphs A, B, and C that follows. If your loan is FHA for the buyer, you'll mark that box and you'll fill in the amount of the purchase price where you see the dollar sign and the blank line. And then it says if the price changes because say it appraised for less but the buyer and seller agreed on the smaller price, then you'll have to go back, fill that in again and everybody initial it and date it. If it's a VA loan, simple mark makes it appraisal contingent and the same with conventional or USDA. So with a simple X or check mark, you can make the contract obligation of the buyer contingent on it appraising. The only time a simple check mark won't do that if it's cash. Most cash buyers don't get appraisals, but if you wanted to have the buyer have a contingency for a cash purchase appraisal, you would put language in paragraph 17, something like the following. The buyer's obligation to perform this agreement is contingent on the property appraising for at least $100,000. Next, look at lines um, 83 and 84. They're not used as frequently. That would be if the seller's going to hold a mortgage or if there's a mortgage assumption. The only mortgages that are assumable are VA and FHA mortgages, and even those require the buyer to be approved just as if they were getting a new loan because rates are so small now, we've rarely seen an assumption. Now we come to the loan application part. I hope you'll read carefully lines 85 to 95. This says that the buyer has a certain number of days to apply for the loan, and it says five if left blank. So that's suitable in most cases, but perhaps your buyer's in the hospital, perhaps they're on a vacation and they can't do it as quickly. The seller would probably accept an offer if it had seven days. Longer than that, it may not. And then it says the buyer has to timely furnish their tax returns and all of the information that the lender requests. And then it says in bold in line 89 that if buyer doesn't do that, the buyer's in default. They can't try to get disapproved. They would be in default. Now there's a change in line 96. This now says the time for the loan to approve is blank, but if you fill nothing in, it's 30 days. That used to say 45 days. So that's one of the larger changes in this version of the contract. The members of the committee checked with the lenders and 30 days seemed to be sufficient. If you check with the lender that your buyer wants to use and they think they need 40 or 45, then you would fill that in. But we hope that in most instances, it's going to be 30. Now, there's a major omission in this one on purpose. The old version, prior to now, used to say that the buyer had five more days after the 30 days or 45-day loan approval, five more days to cancel in writing. Uh, we took that out. Now it's the number of days to get the loan, and there are no more days after that. There's no grace period. And so it has greatly, greatly simplified that paragraph. I encourage you to read carefully lines 96 through 104. They're important. That concludes page two.